Hello and welcome to the PrimaryOdors.org YouTube channel. Today I will be comparing three often confused chemicals that are sometimes used for pest control, specifically moths. I wanted to know just how similar the smells of these three chemicals are, so I went ahead and bought naphthalene, the ingredient in classic or old-fashioned mothballs, paradichlorobenzene, a newer mothball compound, and camphor, a naturally occurring alternative used for its much lower toxicity. Just a standard warning, some of the chemicals used in this video are suspected of being carcinogenic. So if you do decide to obtain any of them, be aware of that risk and observe all precautions when handling them. I'll be comparing my observations with organoleptic odor descriptions from the Good Sense Company. I've gone ahead and portioned the first two compounds into these small bottles for easy observation of small quantities. The naphthalene, as you hopefully can see, broke apart into small pieces and powder really easily, while the dichlorobenzene stayed together better into larger pieces. The camphor is already a small quantity of a relatively safe compound, so I'll be smelling it in the condition I received it in. The Good Sense Company describes naphthalene's smell as pungent, dry, resinous. So this naphthalene actually reminds me a lot of indole and of quinoline, two other compounds with similar molecular structures to naphthalene. In fact, the resemblance to indole is so strong that this even gives me a bit of a used diaper impression. I also get a strong aspirin-like note in this, which I'm calling salicylic because not only is it a major part of the aroma of aspirin, it's also part of the aroma of wintergreen oil, which is methyl salicylic. This also has a certain darkness to it, a note that can be perceived in the smells of myrcene, patchouli, and anise, which I will combine the three words and call it mirulinesic. Otherwise, it's very much a phenolic minty smell which in combination makes the naphthal note, which is shared by certain other compounds such as coumarin. In summary, naphthalene smells salicylic, phenolic, and naphthal with a mirulinesic undertone. The Good Sense Company doesn't list organoleptics for p dichlorobenzene maybe because of its suspected carcinogenicity. Wow, that takes me back. My grandmother used to put this in her vacuum cleaner. It's much mintier than naphthalene. In fact, the first time I smelled it, I was about 15, not knowing what it was, I wanted to call it carpet mint. So it's got that plushy new carpet smell. Other aroma compounds that have this plushy note include cocopyrazine and cyclamin aldehyde. This PDCB also smells phenolic naphthal, but it's a lot less salicylic than the naphthalene. It's a more clean smell, as if I can just pick out that it has chlorine in it. But of course, I'm not smelling free chlorine because it doesn't release that. In summary, p dichlorobenzene smells minty, plushy, naphthal, and clean. The Good Sense Company just describes camphor as smelling camphorious. Not much to go on there. This smells very different from the other two compounds, which is not surprising because unlike those, this is not an aromatic compound, meaning it doesn't contain a planar ring of atoms with conjugated bonds and 4n plus 2 pi electrons. Camphor does have the smell that's best described as camphorous. That seems circular, but really it's a distinctive scent. It's like cough drops or that chest rub used for treating the common cold. Breaking it down, I get a definite mirulinesic note. This is synthetic camphor and therefore probably racemic, meaning that the molecule has a handedness, and so it can be one of two isomers that are mirror images of each other. And then racemic is both isomers occur 50-50. And chemical reactions usually produce racemic results. And since this is synthetic, I suspect that's what's going on. And I've noticed other chiral molecules. Chiral from the ancient Greek word for hand, 
will sometimes have a certain Merumanesic or like oily petroleum note if they're racemic. So I suspect that's what I'm detecting here. Natural camphor is the plus isomer and it might smell cleaner than this, I don't know. Otherwise, there's a hint of a lemon citrus note, which when combined with the Merulanese, it reminds me a lot of Myrcene. It's also a little bit minty. In fact, this smells a lot like a mixture of lemon, peppermint, and pine, which makes sense because all of these scents are based in terpenoids, which is the same class of compound that camphor is. Terpenoids account for the smells of a lot of different herbs and spices. So smelling this more closely, I can break it down into an herbal note, a sort of painty ethereal note, and the aforementioned Merulanesic note. Since I haven't found any one receptor that seems to be sensitive specifically to camphorous smells, it's my hypothesis that the camphorous note is not primary, but a mixture of herbal, painty or ethereal, and Merulanesic or oily petroleum, something like that. So in summary, synthetic camphor smells herbal, painty, merulinesic, and minty. This has been a very informative experiment for my nose, and I wish I could share the smells with you, the viewer. I hope it's been informative for you as well. If someone says something smells like mothballs, you can say, what kind of mothballs? Because do all mothballs smell alike? No. Thank you for watching. Side note, if you can help it, don't ever get chronic bronchitis. A couple of years ago, the flu, before I collected all these aroma compounds, of the compounds, the few that are toxic, retroactively, the fumes went back in time and gave me bronchitis. That's what it was. It's the chemicals. It's, it wasn't the sick. <laughs>